hey guys what's up so we are just about to finish 30 percent of the course and we will do it in the next lesson and here we'll discuss lots and lots of great mcqs with the explanation so let us get started with question number 281 to 290 of environment and ecology which of the following is are the non-point sources of pollution okay excess fertilizers herbicides insecticides from agricultural land and residential areas yes uh, salt from irrigation practices and acid drainage from abandoned mines, yes. Dumping of half burnt or unburnt dead bodies, yes. All of these are there. Answer is D123. So, non point source pollution is basically a combination of pollutants from a large area rather than from specific identifiable sources such as discharge pipes. So, it includes excess fertilizers in residential areas, oil, grease, and toxic chemicals uh, from Dhobi Ghats. Um, sediments from improperly managed construction sites, salt from irrigation practices, bacteria and nutrients from livestock, atmospheric deposition, hydro, hydro modification, etc. All of these are the non point source of pollution. Question number 282 Which of the following are the possible side effects or possible effects of global warming? The monsoon arriving beforehand and damaging the mango cultivation. Yes, it can happen because of global warming. Droughts leading to lesser production, yes. So on the other hand, you will have flood somewhere. On the other hand, you will have drought somewhere. The low-lying agricultural lands will be submerged because of rising sea water levels. So this is correct. So answer here becomes D123. So all these statements are absolutely correct regarding the global warming. So effects of global warming includes temperature increase. So there is more sporadic rainfall events from global warming and it can increase irrigation and uh, increase sea levels and submerging low-lying agricultural lands. Then there is extreme weather events, then there is weeds, pests, diseases. All of these are absolutely correct. So answer is D123. Uh, question number 283. Which of the following statement is or are true about particulate matter? So they are small solid particles and liquid droplets which are suspended in the air so answer here is C they are small solid particles liquid droplets suspended in the air particulate matter also known as particle pollution it is a complex mixture of extremely small particles and liquid droplets that get into the air and some are emitted directly from a source such as construction sites uh, unpaved roads fields smokestacks wires etc most particles form in the atmosphere as a result of a complex reaction of chemicals like sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides, etc. And particles are of two types, less than 2.5 micron and less than 10 micron. To less than 2.5 micron are very very dangerous. Okay. It can even come in the lungs, bloodstream and uh, the particle like I talk about the PM10 and the particle 2.5 can cause reduced visibility haze as it is happening in Delhi. Question number 284, which of the following are considered as particulate pollutants? So dust is definitely there, ozone is not there, this is wrong. Soot is there, smoke is there. So answer here is C, that is 134. The particulate pollution or particulate matter, it is a very complex mixture that contains dust, pollen, soot, smoke, liquid droplets. And high concentration of dust are often referred to as particulate matter or the PM. And the particulate matter in smoke is most commonly composed of carbon or soot. And other particulates, it may be composed of drops of condensed star or solid particles of ash, etc. So answer technically becomes here C, that is 134. Question number 285, which of the following causes soil degradation? So steep slopes, frequent floods and tornadoes, yes. Overgrazing by livestock, yes. Loss of nutrients or organic matter, salinization, acidification. So, answer here is D123. All of these statements are absolutely correct. So, soil degradation is a process that lowers the current and future capacity of the soil to produce goods and services. It can either be a result of natural hazards or due to unsuitable land use and inappropriate land management practices, which happens in India a lot, unfortunately. So farmers, farmers very very treat their land badly, inadvertently, a lot of irrigation, a lot of fertilizers, bad cultural practices, 
which are not adapted to local environments over grazing then natural hazards include land topography such as steep slopes frequent floods tornadoes blowing of high velocity then chemical deterioration includes loss of nutrients or organic matter salinization acidification soil pollution fertility decline etc so answer here is basically d123 question 26 the pollutant which is not directly emitted as such but forms when other pollutants react in the atmosphere are known as they are called as secondary pollutants because they are the result of interaction of primary pollutants so it is not directly emitted but forms when primary pollutants they react in the atmosphere examples of secondary pollutants include ozone which is formed when hydrocarbons like aldehyde etc and nitrogen oxides they combine in the presence of sunlight so answer here is d that is secondary pollutants question 27 which of the following are considered as primary pollutants sulfur dioxide produced from burning of coal is a primary pollutant uh, nitrogen oxides produced from burning of fuels including petrol diesel and coal are again primary pollutants carbon monoxide gas from a motor vehicle exhaust is also primary pollutants so answer here is d all of the above so so2 no2 carbon monoxide chlorofluorocarbon co2 all of these are various primary pollutants so answer here is d question number 288 Uh, which of the following statement is or are correct uh, radioactive pollutants produced by nuclear explosion and war explosive is a primary pollutant so that is correct suspended particulate matter or spm can be both primary as well as secondary pollutant so answer here is c both one and two bilkul sahi baat hai dono sahi hai so primary pollutant are substances which are directly emitted from a process like ash from a volcanic eruption hence radioactive pollutants produced by nuclear explosion and war explosions they are primary pollutant and particulate matter can originate from basically a variety of stationary and mobile sources and it can be either directly emitted or formed in the atmosphere like secondary sources uh, question number 29 which of the following are examples of nuclear pollution chernobyl disaster 1986 soviet union yes 1979 explosion at the 3 mile island in usa yes fukushima daiichi disaster of 2011 japan yes so answer here is d 1 2 3 So, Chernobyl accident was the result of a flawed reactor design. Uh, Three Mile Island is a site of nuclear power plant in Pennsylvania, and a series of mechanical and human errors at the plant caused a nuclear accident, resulting in the partial meltdown, which released a lot of radiation into the atmosphere. And Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster happened in 2011, followed by tsunami. Question number two ninety: The worst oil spill and environmental catastrophe in U.S. happened in. So it happened in the deep water horizon offshore oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico. So uh, option B and C did not even occur in USA. So there was an explosion and sinking of deep water horizon rig in the Gulf of Mexico. There is a movie also, okay, which stars uh, Mark Wahlberg in like deep water horizon. So thank you for watching this lesson. Hey guys, what's up? So we have surpassed the three hundred MCQ mark, and it is a tremendous achievement on our part. And we will discuss question number three zero one two three one zero. And just get let let us hope that we cross like the thousand milestone very very soon. So let's get started. Which of the following is are the point sources of pollution? So point sources basically when you can identify one single source. So obviously factories is a point source of agricultural pollution. Then sewage treatment plants are also point source. Like uh, they are discharged through pipe, ship, factory smog, etc. Okay, so it is pretty clear that way. And the third one is agriculture runoff into a river. So that is a non-point source of pollution. So answer here is C one and two. So when we talk about point source pollution, it means that any single identifiable source of pollution from which pollutants are discharged, such as a pipe, ditch, ship, factory smokestack, etc., and factories, sewage treatment plants, they basically they are of two common types of point sources. And agricultural runoff is a non-point source of pollution. So answer here becomes C. That is one and two. Question number three zero two. Once the fourth largest lake in the entire world, the Aral Sea is now tenth of its original size. The reason for this devastation is the reason is that uh, the Soviet era irrigation projects diverted river water away from the lake. Don't think of global warming, ozone depletion. It is always like it's not always the culprit. Here the reason is something else. So answer is C. So Soviet era when there was USSR, there are a lot of irrigation projects that diverted river water away from the lake. 
Now, can you imagine that it was the fourth largest in the world? And now it is just 10% left. So, Aral Sea is situated in Central Asia, between the southern part of Kazakhstan and northern Uzbekistan, and up until the basically uh, the third quarter of the 20th century, it was the world's fourth largest saline lake. But now it is not there. And the two rivers that feed it are the Amu Darya and Sir Darya, and they reach the sea through the south and the north. Soviet government decided in the 1960s to divert those rivers so that they could irrigate the desert region surrounding the sea in order to favor agriculture rather than supply the Aral Sea Basin and the water level in the Aral Sea started drastically decreasing and caused the sea to slowly desiccate over the last 40 years. Question number 303 which of the following are correctly matched? Water hyacinth phytoremediation is absolutely correct. Canola oil biopesticide is absolutely correct. Oceans carbon sequestration that is also correct. So answer is basically D123. So what do you mean by phytoremediation when you need the help of plants to clean the environment? It is a direct use of living green plants for in situ or in place removal, degradation or containment of contaminants in soil, sludges, sediments, surface water, groundwater, etc. And using the water hyacinth to absorb the toxic chemicals from the water bodies, it is an example of phytoremediation. And vegetable soils such as canola oil are known to have the pesticidal properties, hence they are called as the biopesticides. Now oceans are basically the world's largest carbon sinks where carbon dioxide is absorbed and held and hence it helps in the carbon sequestration. So answer here is basically D that is 1, 2, 3. Question number 304 assertion and reason. Albedo is a non-dimensional unitless quantity. It is just a percentage. Uh, that how well a surface reflects solar energy. So if 100% is striking you, how much percentage you are reflecting? So A is absolutely correct. Albedo has an important influence on the Earth's temperature. Yes, but it is not the correct reason. So answer here is B. That is both are correct, but reason is not the correct explanation of assertion. So albedo is the fraction of solar energy, short wave radiation, reflected from the Earth back into the space. It is a measure of the reflectivity of the Earth's surface ice with snow on top of it has a high albedo. Now albedo has substantial influence over atmospheric temperature as the amount of solar energy determines the temperature of the atmospheric air. So answer here is basically B assertion is not true but reason is not correct explanation of assertion. Question number 305 which of the following are considered as a greenhouse gas. So carbon dioxide, methane, uh, nitrous oxide, water vapor, ozone. So all these five are basically considered as the greenhouse gas. So all of them are greenhouse gas. So there is like uh, not much logic behind it. So gases which basically trap heat in the atmosphere, they are called as greenhouse gases. And the primary greenhouse gases in Earth's atmosphere are water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, ozone, etc. So answer here becomes D. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Question number 306. Which of the following statement is correct? An aerosol is a collection of suspended particles which are either solid or liquid particles in a gas. Okay, this is correct. Particulate matter is a generic term for a mixture of liquid droplets or solid particles found in the air. So yes, both these statements are correct. Answer is basically C, that is both 1 and 2. So aerosols are suspensions of solid or liquid particles in a gas, which is usually air. And the particulate portion of an aerosol is referred to as the particulate matter or PM. Now any solid or liquid which is in a subdivided state especially one that exhibits the special characteristics which are negligible in the bulk material is known as the particulate matter now they are usually of two types 2.5 m which is less than 2.5 micron and 10 m which is less than 10 micron it is a basically a generic term which is applied to chemically heterogeneous discrete liquid droplets or solid particles question number 307 which of the following is an indicator of water pollution answer is uh, bod yes eutrophication yes ph yes all of the above are water pollution indicators so BOD is one of the most common measures, it just measures how much oxygen you require to oxidize a particular organic compound and nutrient pollution especially of nitrogen, phosphorus etc and it leads to the harmful algal bloom HAB this is known as eutrophication this is usually seen in the case of lakes and pH is a measure of how acidic or basic it is and it can be indicator of increased pollution Question 308 which of the following are the major causes of biomagnification um, so it is basically through the toxic chemicals and pesticides like DDT etc. So they undergo magnification in the food chain. 
So for example, DDT once it goes in water, it is taken by phytoplanktons, which are eaten by fishes. Small fishes are eaten by big fish. Big fish is eaten by eagle. And finally, its egg cells are brittle because of DDT. That phenomena is called as biomagnification. As the you go up the food chain, the concentration increases. It is a cumulative increase in the concentration of a persistent substance like pesticides, metals, toxic chemicals as it moves up the food chain. Question 309. Which of the following statements are correct about activated sludge process? The activated sludge process is a type of wastewater treatment process for treating sewage or the industrial wastewater. That is correct. And in activated sludge process, organic matter is aerated in a aeration, aeration basin in which microorganisms they metabolize the suspended and soluble organic matter. Absolutely correct. This is directly taken from NCRT. It is a process for treating sewage and wastewater using bacteria and air. And finally, you have question number 310. The Brahmani Odisha, second largest river that runs through Sukhandi, Sukhinda Valley is the state's most polluted because of chromium mining. The answer here is A. So Sukhinda Valley, which is in Odisha's Jaipur, uh, Jajpur district, it has around 97% of the country's reserve of chromite ore which is a vital component in production of stainless steel leather alloys and the Brahmani which is Odisha's second largest river and which runs through Sukhinda Valley is the state's most polluted because of excessive hexavalent chromium exposure so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so let us discuss question number 311 to 320 in environment and ecology and these are like very very important topics which uh, you'll need to understand okay Question number 311, which of the following processes add carbon dioxide into the atmosphere? Now, this is a very, very important question, which you'll need to understand. So, photosynthesis does not produce carbon dioxide. You should know this point, fact. Everybody should know this fact. So, it rather like takes the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and converts it into carbohydrates. So, this statement is wrong. Since first is wrong, the only option that can be correct is C, that is 2, 3, 4. So, it means respiration, volcanic action, dead and decaying organic matter, all of this will add the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere so answer here is c that is two three four so photosynthesis does not produce any carbon dioxide and it is the process by which plants some bacteria some protestants they use the energy from the sunlight to produce glucose from carbon dioxide and water and respiration volcanic action decaying of organic matter it basically produces the carbon dioxide so answer here becomes c that is two three four question number three hundred twelve which of the following statements about photochemical smog is or are correct? Okay, let us see. Photochemical smog occurs in drier, sunny areas. Yes, this statement is 100% correct. It forms because of increased usage of all the fossil fuels, including gasoline and the burning of trees and organic wastes. So, yes, this statement is also correct. So, answer here is C, that is both 1 and 2. So, photochemical smog is a mixture of pollutants that form when nitrogen oxides volatile organic compounds they react to sunlight which creates a haze now this haze uh, it will not the visibility will come down very sharply because of this it occurs in drier sunny areas and they form because of increased usage of all the fossil fuels including the gasoline and burning of trees organic waste etc and the two major primary pollutants that is nitrogen oxides and voc they combine together in a series of chemical reactions to create secondary pollutants like ozone, peroxidyl, peroxyacetyl nitrate, etc. So answer here is C, both 1 and 2. Both of these statements are absolutely correct. Question number 313. Treatment of savage. Sewage involves removal of suspended particles. Yes, obviously you will need to have removal of suspended particles. Allow aeration for bacterial action. Yes, this is also correct. So that bacteria can oxidize. Uh, the organic compound so answer here is C that is both 1 and 2 the sewage treatment generally involves the three categories primary secondary and tertiary treatment primary treatment basically consists of temporarily holding the sewage in a quiescent basin where heavy solids can settle to the bottom while oil grease and lighter solids float to the surface uh, secondary treatment removes like basically the dissolved and suspended biological matter and it typically performed by indigenous waterborne microorganisms in a managed habitat and finally, you have the tertiary treatment, which involves making the water eligible in order to uh, allow ejection into a highly sensitive or fragile ecosystem. So, that was the tertiary treatment. Then you have question number 314. Arsenic poisoning and drinking water has been shown to cause. Uh, it can cause like cancer, obviously, and it can also called as blackfoot disease. Okay, 
so answer here is b so drinking water which is rich in arsenic over a long period leads to arsenic poisoning or arsenicosis and exposure to arsenic via drinking water it has been shown to cause a severe disease of the blood vessels which leads to gangrene and it is known as the blackfoot disease so answer here is b question number 315 which of the following can reduce the effect of soil pollution uh, reduce toxic waste yes this will definitely reduce the effect of soil pollution use of organic methods of farming yes uh, promote biological manures and biofertilizers yes so answer here is basically d that is 1 to 3 all these statements are absolutely correct so soil pollution basically can be controlled by reducing chemicals and fertilizer use promoting biofertilizers bio manure uh, recycling of paper plastics other materials uh, basically it will reduce the volume of uh, refuse and landfills uh, remediation of polluted soils prevention of erosion and silting planting trees or reforestation which helps prevent soil erosion and pollution okay question number 316 the absorption or checking of re radiating heat by atmosphere with co2 methane ozone and dust this effect is called as greenhouse effect it is not called as global warming global warming happens because of greenhouse effect it is a consequence of greenhouse effect it is a result of greenhouse effect it is a ramification of greenhouse effect or global warming uh, greenhouse effect is uh, leads to global warming so the greenhouse uh, effect is caused by the greenhouse gases in our atmosphere there are several of them ch4 co2 nitrogen oxides etc they trap and they redirect the heat back to the earth and global warming is basically a consequence of greenhouse effect global dimming is defined as the total decrease in the insulation amount reaching to the surface of the earth so if the total solar radiation reduces which is coming towards the way of the earth then it is called as the global dimming Question number three hundred seventeen. Which of the following is are the consequence of greenhouse gases? So there is more drought and more flooding. So yes, this statement is correct. So there is more drought and more flooding. Yes, less ice and snow. Yes, because of the global warming, that ice and snow will melt down to form water. More extreme weather incidents. Yes, this is also correct. Uh, rising sea levels. Yes, this is also correct. So answer is all of the above. D. so when the weather will get warmer evaporation happens from both the land and the sea it will definitely increase and this can cause drought in the areas of the world where the increased evaporation is not compensated by the more rain similarly warmer climate will cause more heat waves more violent rainfall increase in the number of severity of storms now sea level will rise because of the melting ice and snow and because of the thermal expansion of the sea and areas that are just above the sea level now may become submerged and if you just heat the water because water gets warm it expands question number 318 ozone is considered as a secondary pollutant yes because it is not directly produced rather it is produced when primary pollutants like hydrocarbons nitrogen oxides they combine in the presence of sunlight so this is absolutely correct so answer is assertion and is it true and it is the correct explanation of assertion so secondary pollutants form in the atmosphere through chemical and photochemical reactions from the primary pollutants and examples includes when hydrocarbons and nitrogen oxides they combine in the presence of sunlight question number 319 which of the following is known as the terror of bengal so terror of bengal is a disease uh, which the plant is the ecornia crassipis okay so what are hyacinth or ecornia crassipis so that is called as the terror of bengal so it is called as terror of bengal because it grows rapidly enormously it hampers the growth and nutrition of small aquatic animals which lives under the pond or lake it just completely covers the entire pond or the lake now fish is a supplement food in bengal but the rapid growth of ecornia it is even causing fish scarcity in bengal because fishes are not able to survive blue baby syndrome is caused by so it is caused by nitrate poisoning okay So instead of hemoglobin, you form meth hemo meth 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 hemoglobin. So answer is A. So as it is called as meth hemoglobinemia. So body tissue may be deprived of oxygen, and there is a lot of meth hemoglobin, and infant will develop a blue color of their mucous membrane and everywhere, and it is caused by nitrate contamination in the groundwater, and the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood becomes very very low. Thank you for watching this lesson. Hey guys, what's up? so let us discuss question number 311 to 320 in environment and ecology and these are like very very important topics which uh, you will need to understand okay 
क्वेश्चन नंबर 311 हंड्रेड इलेवन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग प्रोसेस इज एड कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इन टू द एटमोसफेयर नाउ दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन विच यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड सो फोटोसिंथेसिस डज नॉट प्रोड्यूस कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड यू शुड नो दिस पॉइंट फैक्ट एवरीबडी शुड नो दिस फैक्ट सो इट रादर लाइक टेक्स द कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड फ्रॉम द एटमोसफेयर एंड कन्वर्ट्स इट इन टू कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स सो दिस स्टेटमेंट इज रॉन्ग सिंस फर्स्ट इज रॉन्ग द ओनली ऑप्शन दैट कैन बी करेक्ट इज सी दैट इज टू थ्री फोर इट मीन्स रेस्पिरेशन वॉलकैनिक एक्शन डेड एंड डिकिंग ऑर्गेनिक मैटर ऑल ऑफ दिस विल एड the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere so answer here is c that is 2 3 so photosynthesis does not produce any carbon dioxide and it is the process by which plants some bacteria some protistans they use the energy from the sunlight to produce glucose from carbon dioxide and water and respiration volcanic action decaying of organic matter it basically produces the carbon dioxide so answer here becomes c that is 2 3 4 question number 312 Which of the following statements about photochemical smog is or are correct? Okay, let us see. Photochemical smog occurs in drier, sunny areas. Yes, this statement is hundred percent correct. It forms because of increased usage of all the fossil fuels, including gasoline and the burning of trees and organic wastes. So yes, this statement is also correct. So answer here is C. That is both one and two. So photochemical smog is a mixture of pollutants. that form when nitrogen oxides volatile organic compounds they react to sunlight which creates a haze now this haze uh, it will not the visibility will come down very sharply because of this it occurs in drier sunny areas and they form because of increased usage of all the fossil fuels including the gasoline and burning of trees organic waste etc and the two major primary pollutants that is nitrogen oxides and voc they combine together in a series of chemical reactions to create secondary pollutants like ozone peroxidyl peroxyacetyl nitrate etc so answer here is c both one and two both of these statements are absolutely correct question number 313 treatment of sewage sewage involves removal of suspended particles yes obviously you will need to have removal of suspended particles allow aeration for bacterial action yes this is also correct so that bacteria can oxidize uh the organic compound so answer here is c that is both one and two so sewage treatment generally in all the three categories primary secondary and tertiary treatment primary treatment basically consists of temporarily holding the sewage in a quiescent basin where heavy solids can settle to the bottom while oil grease and lighter solids float to the surface uh secondary treatment removes like basically the dissolved and suspended biological matter and it typically performed by indigenous water bond microorganisms in a managed habitat and finally you have the tertiary treatment which involves making the water eligible in order to uh, allow ejection into a highly sensitive or fragile ecosystem so that was the tertiary treatment then you have question number 314 arsenic poisoning in drinking water has been shown to cause uh, it can cause like cancer obviously and it can also called as black foot disease okay so answer here is b so drinking water which is rich in arsenic over a long period leads to arsenic poisoning or arsenicosis and exposure to arsenic via drinking water it has been shown to cause a severe disease of the blood vessels which leads to gangrene and it is known as the black foot disease so answer here is b question number 315 which of the following can reduce the effect of soil pollution uh, reduce toxic waste yes this will definitely reduce the effect of soil pollution use of organic methods of farming yes Uh, promote biological manures and bio fertilizers yes so answer here is basically d that is 1 to 3 all these statements are absolutely correct so soil pollution basically can be controlled by reducing chemicals and fertilizer use promoting bio fertilizers bio manure uh, recycling of paper plastics other materials uh, basically it will reduce the volume of uh, refuse and landfills uh, remediation of polluted soils prevention of erosion and silting planting trees or reforestation which helps prevent soil erosion and pollution okay question number 316 the absorption or checking of re-radiating heat by atmosphere with co2 methane ozone and dust this effect is called as greenhouse effect it is not called as global warming global warming happens because of greenhouse effect it is a consequence of greenhouse effect it is a result of greenhouse effect it is a ramification of greenhouse effect or global warming uh, greenhouse effect is uh, leads to global warming so the greenhouse uh, effect is caused by the greenhouse gases in our atmosphere there are several of them ch4 co2 nitrogen oxides etc 
द ट्रैप एंड द रीडायरेक्ट द हीट बैक टू द अर्थ एंड ग्लोबल वार्मिंग इज बेसिकली अ कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ ग्रीन हाउस इफेक्ट ग्लोबल डिमिंग इज डिफाइंड एज द टोटल डिक्रीज इन द इंसोलेशन अमाउंट रीचिंग टू द सर्फेस ऑफ द अर्थ सो द टोटल सोलर रेडिएशन रिड्यूस विच इज कमिंग टूवर्ड्स द वे ऑफ द अर्थ देन इट इज कॉल्ड एज द ग्लोबल डिमिंग क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री हंड्रेड सेवनटीन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज आर द कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ ग्रीन हाउस गैसेज देर इज मोर ड्रॉट एंड मोर फ्लडिंग सो यस दिस स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट सो देर इज मोर ड्रॉट एंड मोर फ्लडिंग यस लेस आइस एंड स्नो यस बिकॉज ऑफ द ग्लोबल वार्मिंग दट आइस एंड स्नो विल मेल्ट डाउन टू फॉर्म वाटर मोर एक्सट्रीम वेदर इंसिडेंट्स यस दिस इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट राइजिंग सी लेवल्स यस दिस इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट सो आंसर इज ऑल ऑफ द अबाउट डी so when the weather will get warmer evaporation happens from both the land and the sea it will definitely increase and this can cause drought in the areas of the world where the increased evaporation is not compensated by the more rain similarly warmer climate will cause more heat waves more violent rainfall increase in the number of severity of storms now sea level will rise because of the melting ice and snow and because of the thermal expansion of the sea and areas that are just above the sea level now may become submerged and if you just heat the water because water gets warm it expands question number 318 ozone is considered as a secondary pollutant yes because it is not directly produced rather it is produced when primary pollutants like hydrocarbons nitrogen oxides they combine in the presence of sunlight so this is absolutely correct so answer is assertion and is untrue and it is the correct explanation of assertion so secondary pollutants form in the atmosphere through chemical and photochemical reactions from the primary pollutants and examples includes when hydrocarbons and nitrogen oxides they combine in the presence of sunlight question number 319 which of the following is known as the terror of bengal so terror of bengal is a disease uh, which the plant is the ecornia crassipis okay so water hyacinth or ecornia crassipis so that is called as the terror of bengal so it is called as terror of bengal because it grows rapidly enormously it hampers the growth and nutrition of small aquatic animals which lives under the pond or lake it just completely covers the entire pond or the lake now fish is a supplement food in bengal but the rapid growth of ecornia it is even causing fish scarcity in bengal because fishes are not able to survive blue baby syndrome is caused by so it is caused by nitrate poisoning okay so instead of hemoglobin you form meth hemo meth 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 hemoglobin so answer is a so as it is called as meth hemoglobinemia so body tissue may be deprived of oxygen and there is lot of meth hemoglobin and infant will develop a blue color of their mucous membrane and everywhere and it is caused by nitrate contamination in the ground water and the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood becomes very very low thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so we have covered 320 mcqs and by the time this lesson is over we will have covered almost one third of the entire course which is a huge achievement i did not thought that i will be able to achieve it so fast and uh, now the achievement is if you guys watch it and actually crack you basis will service examination after watching this course so question number 321 to 330 environment and ecology mcqs let's get started question number 321 which of the following statement is or are correct so fluoride is a non biodegradable and persistent pollutant yes this is uh, absolutely correct chronic fluoride intoxication can cause fluorosis this is also correct the desirable limit of fluoride as per the bureau of indian standards bis is 1 parts per million okay so or 1 mg per liter yes this is desirable so answer here is d 1 2 3 all these statements are absolutely correct so fluoride is a widespread non biodegradable and persistent pollutant and it can cause a crippling disease uh, when the fluorides get deposited in the bones and soft tissues of the body the maximum pers- permissible limit of fluoride is 1.5 parts per million desirable limit is 1 part per million but if it is beyond 1.5 parts per million it will cause dental fluorosis and much higher concentration can even call skeletal fluorosis okay so this can really destroy your uh, gums teeth and skeleton okay they usually affect the teeth a lot and the skeletal fluorosis happens at a much higher concentration question number 322 which of the following are correctly matched national animal is royal bengal tiger yes this is correct national heritage animal of india is uh, elephant okay not langur national mammal of india there is no national mammal of india kuch bhi matlab ah national bird is peacock yes everybody knows that so answer is c1 and 4 So national heritage animal of India is the elephant and there is no category of national mammal 
in India at all. So answer is C. That is one and four only. Question number three twenty three. Artificial ripening of fruits is induced by using which of the following? So basically, there are five plant hormones: oxygen, cyclin, cytokine, abscisic acid, and ethylene. So ethylene is responsible for artificial ripening of fruits. Or if let's say you buy one banana and you buy seven raw bananas, and if you keep them together within two three days, you will find out that all the other bananas have ripened. So answer is because of use of ethylene, the artificial ripening of fruits can be induced. So ethylene is commonly known as the senescence hormone, and it is thought of as the aging hormone in the plants. And in addition to causing fruit to ripen, it can also cause plants to die. So answer is D. That is ethylene. Question number three twenty four. Which of the following is known as the selvas? So selvas are basically hot, wet, equatorial evergreen forests. So these are the selvas, and the rain forest of Amazon basin. is also called as selvas so answer is b hot wet equatorial evergreen forest and they are usually present in the uh, brazil region etc so the hot rain for the rain forest of amazon basin is called as the selvas let us see question number 325 halophytes halophyte is a plant which loves salts okay literally halo means salt phyte means plant So these are the plants which are adapted to grow in sea because sea has marine conditions. Marine conditions have a lot of salt in the water. So halophyte is a plant that grows in waters of high salinity, coming into contact with saline water uh, through its roots or by salt spray, such as in saline semi deserts, mangrove swamps, marshes, sloughs, seashores, etc. Now halophytes possess some of the structural modifications of xerophytes. For example, many of them are succulents, and they are physiologically adapted to withstand the high salinity of the soil water, and their uh, root cells have a very higher than normal concentration of solutes. So you can even in that case, when the water is bogged down with salt, even in that case, they can absorb the water from the soil. Examples of halophytes include mangrove, thrift, sea lavender, rice grass, etc. Try to remember these names; it will help you a lot. Question number three twenty six. Which of the following statements about ozone is or are correct? Stratospheric ozone formation occurs when nitrogen oxides, carbon monoxide, and volatile organic compounds they react in the atmosphere in the presence of sunlight. No, no, this is absolutely wrong. Stratospheric ozone formation occurs when an oxygen atom combines with an oxygen molecule in the presence of solar light. But in trap troposphere, it happens when NOx and CO combines with volatile organic compounds like aldehydes, etc. So basically, they have reversed these two statements. So answer becomes D. Neither one nor two. Tropospheric ozone formation occurs when NOx, CO, and volatile organic compounds react in the atmosphere in the presence of sunlight. On the other hand, stratospheric ozone is produced by a combination of an oxygen atom with an oxygen molecule in the presence of solar ultraviolet radiation, that is the sunlight. So I hope you are getting the point now. Question number three twenty seven, which of the following are considered as green sources of energy? Solar energy is definitely green because it will not cause much pollution. Geothermal energy is also green; it will not cause much pollution. Uh, nuclear energy is not a like a green source of energy. Wind energy is also there. So answer here is C. That is one two four. So nuclear energy is not considered a green source of energy. and green energy comes from natural sources which are sunlight wind rain tides plants algae geothermal heat and these energy resources are renewable meaning they were naturally be replenished and since nuclear energy is a non renewable source of energy hence it is not a green source of energy so i hope uh, that point i have made amply clear because these concepts if they are clarified now so they will help you in later life question number 328 any source of energy that does not use fossil fuels is known as so if you do not use fossil fuels it will be called as an alternative energy so that is how we will classify it so any source of energy does not use any fossil fuel is called as alternative energy and uh, for example coal petrol all these are like traditional sources of energy and uh, solar wind geothermal they are examples of alternative energy because these are providing an alternative to the existing fossil fuel based energy okay Question number three twenty nine. Which of the following are correctly matched? Now these questions are asked a lot, a lot. Golden revolution is associated with fruits, horticulture, even sometimes people call it honey also, but it is mostly associated with fruit. 
so potato is definitely wrong blue revolution is basically associated with fish production so that is absolutely correct fish production here also called as pisciculture uh, or otherwise potato is basically round usually potatoes are round in shape so potato production is called as the round revolution and the yellow revolution is related to the oil seed production so here the first statement is wrong because golden revolution has to be fruit sunny and horticulture second statement blue revolution is correct yellow revolution is correct so answer here basically becomes c that is 2 and 3 only last question of the day uh, which of the following statements are, are correct coffee plant requires hot and humid climate yes this is correct it does not tolerate frost snowfall high temperature about 30 degrees celsius and strong sunshine and is generally grown under shady trees so this is also correct coffee production in india is dominated in the plateau region of the south indian states no this is wrong it is in the hill tracts of the south indian states so you can read more about it here and it is in the hill tracts of the south indian states kerala accounts for 71 percent uh, karnataka accounts for 71 percent kerala 21 percent and tamil nadu 5 percent of the production thank you hey guys what's up so we have covered one third of this course and we have covered 330 mcqs in this particular course and technically when we will be on 334th question then we would have covered the one third of the course so let's hope that we do it very very fast question number 331 consider the following international environment conventions protocols conferences with their major themes so the basel convention in 1989 was on the control of transboundary movement of hazardous wastes and their disposal so this statement is correct and uh, it is usually from the developed countries to less developed countries for example ddt etc either other export kar diya montreal protocol which was adopted on the vienna convention in 1987 referred to the specific measures to be taken on substances that deplete the ozone layer this statement is also correct so answer here is c both one and two so the basel convention on the control of transboundary movements of hazardous waste and their disposal is an international treaty that was designed to reduce the movements of hazardous waste between nations specifically to prevent transfer of hazardous waste from developed to less developed countries and montreal protocol on substances that deplete the ozone layer it is basically an international treaty designed to protect the ozone layer by phasing out the production of numerous substances these substances are basically responsible for ozone depletion Question number 332. The Global Environmental Facility was created under the mechanism provided by. So, the Global Environmental Facility was created under the mechanism provided by UNFCCC, which is United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. So, answer here is C. So, the creation of GEF, it was based on Article 11 of the UNFCCC. It creates a financial mechanism for conventional implementation and it was founded by the World Bank in consultation with UNDP that is United Nations Development Program and UNEP that is United Nations Environment Program. Uh, question number 333 which of the following organizations is are associated with climate change? IUCN yes for sure NAMI yeah. conservation of nature conservation international yes world bank also yes intergovernmental oceanic commission IOC yes so all these organizations are associated with climate change in one way or the another so people might be thinking what is world bank doing in here so world bank is associated with climate change through its role in funding mechanisms like that of global environmental facility as well as climate related projects issuing green bonds among various other things so answer here is d that is one two three four question number 334 the venue for the conference of parties meet which led to the establishment of the green climate fund was Basically, it was at Cancun in Mexico. So, there you had the uh, conference of parties. So, answer here is A. So, the 16th conference of party, they met in Cancun and they, it led to three outcomes. One is technology mechanism. Then you have the green climate fund. Then you have adaptation committee. So, these are the three outcomes of the 16th COP which held in Cancun is a city in Mexico. Mexico is just south of America, the USA. The GCF supports projects, programs, policies and various other activities in developing countries, uh, parties. Okay. Question number 335. Which is the correct order of the following conference of parties meet in the past? 
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू हैड क्योटो इन नाइनटीन नाइन्टी फाइव सो यू स्टार्ट विथ क्योटो सो ए गोज आउट ऑफ द पिक्चर आफ्टर क्योटो यू हैव बाली इन टू थाउजेंड सेवन सो आंसर हेयर बिकम सी देन यू हैव कोपन हैगन इन टू थाउजेंड नाइन देन यू हैव कैंकोन इन टू थाउजेंड टेन एंड फाइनली यू हैव डरबन इन टू थाउजेंड एलेवन ओके सो आंसर हेयर इज सी सो क्योटो देन बाली देन कोपन हैगन कैंकोन एंड डरबन क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी सिक्स ओके अर्थ सबमिट ऑफ रियो डि जेनेरियो नाइनटीन नाइन्टी टू लेट टू दी सो बेसिकली दिस इज़ वेरी वेरी इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशल एंड सी बी डी सो बिकॉज ऑफ दिस यू हैड कन्वेंशन ऑन बायोलॉजिकल डाइवर्सिटी एंड वेरियस प्रोटोकॉल्स हर देयर ऑन दिस कन्वेंशन ओके नगोया एक्सेप्ट्रा सो आंसर हेयर इज बी कन्जर्वे कन्वेंशन ऑन बायोडाइवर्सिटी सी बी डी सो इट वॉज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ अर्थ समिट ऑफ रियो डिजेनेरियो नो रियो डिजेनेरियो इज अ सिटी इन ब्राजील सो द कन्वेंशन ऑन बायोडाइवर्सिटी वॉज ओपन फॉर सिग्नेचर एट द अर्थ समिट ऑन फिफ्थ जून नाइनटीन नाइन्टी टू इट एंटर्ड इन फोर्स ऑन ट्वेंटी नाइन्थ डिसम्बर नाइनटीन नाइन्टी थ्री एंड इट एम्स टू डेवलप नेशनल स्ट्रैटेजीज फॉर द कंजर्वेशन एंड सस्टेनेबल यूज ऑफ बायोलॉजिकल डाइवर्सिटी सो आंसर हेयर इज बी दैट इज कन्वेंशन ऑन बायोलॉजिकल डाइवर्सिटी क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री थर्टी सेवन द रेड डेटा लिस्ट पब्लिश बाय द इंटरनेशनल यूनियन फॉर कंजर्वेशन ऑफ नेचर एंड नेचुरल रिसोर्स बेसिकली इनोमरेट वॉट सो दिस लिस्ट बेसिकली इनोमरेट्स द वेरियस थ्रेटेंड स्पीसीज ऑफ प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स सो आंसर हेयर बिकम सी ओके सो सो आई यू सी एन रेड लिस्ट ऑफ थ्रेटेंड स्पीसीज और द आई यू सी एन रेड लिस्ट और द रेड डेटा लिस्ट इज द वर्ल्ड्स मोस्ट कॉम्प्रहेंसिव इन्वेंट्री ऑफ द ग्लोबल कंजर्वेशन स्टेटस ऑफ बायोलॉजिकल स्पीसीज क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री थर्टी एट विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट इज और आर करेक्ट द क्लीन डेवलपमेंट मैकेजम्स अलाउज अ कंट्री विद एन एमिशन रिडक्शन और एमिशन लिमिटेशन कमिटमेंट अंडर दी क्योटो प्रोटोकॉल टू इम्प्लीमेंट एन एमिशन रिडक्शन प्रोजेक्ट इन डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज दिस इज रॉन्ग इट इज इन डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज द नगोया प्रोटोकॉल विच इज अ सप्लीमेंट्री एग्रीमेंट टू दी सी बी डी सीक्स टू प्रोटेक्ट बायोडाइवर्सिटी फ्रॉम द पोटेंशियल रिस्क पॉज बाय लिविंग मॉडिफाइड नो दिस इज रॉन्ग सो आंसर हेयर इज डी नाइदर वन नॉट टू बोथ ऑफ दीज स्टेटमेंट्स आर एब्सोल्यूटली रॉन्ग so let us talk about the clean development mechanism first so what will happen is let's say under the kyoto protocol uh, it will allow a country with an emission reduction or emission limitation commitment to implement an emission reduction project in some other location in developing countries for example germany doing it in india is allowed then nagoya protocol is a supplementary agreement to the cbd it is aimed at conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity through fair and equitable sharing of benefits so fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising out of the utilization of genetic resources and uh, to protect the biodiversity from the potential risk posed possessed by the living modified organism that is lmos uh, it is a name of cartagena protocol of the convention on biological diversity okay so these points are very very important then you have question number 339 आई यू सी एन रेड डेटा बुक यस दिस इज करेक्ट यू एन ई पी ग्लोबल एनवायरमेंटल रिपोर्ट इज करेक्ट यू एन ई पी एंड इंटरपोल राइज ऑफ एनवायरमेंटल क्लाइम क्राइम इज करेक्ट डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू एफ रिस्पॉन्ड दिस इज रॉन्ग यू एन एफ ट्रिपल सी रिस्पॉन्ड मै पब्लिश इज रिस्पॉन्ड मैगजीन एंड डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू एफ पब्लिश इज द एनर्जी रिपोर्ट एंड द लिविंग प्लानट रिपोर्ट आंसर इज वन टू थ्री सो वर्ल्ड वाइल्ड लाइफ फंड डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू एफ पब्लिश इज द एनर्जी रिपोर्ट एंड द लिविंग प्लानट रिपोर्ट एंड रिस्पॉन्डिंग टू क्लाइमेट चेंज an accredited official observer at the unf triple c uh, processes uh, publishes the magazine respond question number 340 the last question for the day which of the following statements is or are correct food and agricultural organization was established as a specialized un agency in 1945 yes this is absolutely correct the primary goal of the food and agriculture organization is obtaining food security for all so answer is c both one and two so fao is a specialized agency that leads international effort to defeat hunger primary objective is to give food security for all make sure that people have regular access to enough high quality food to lead active healthy lives so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so we have covered more than one third of the course we have covered the first 340 mcqs and now i'm going to deal with the mcqs number 341 to 350 this is the environment and ecology mcqs so let us get started Question number three forty one. Which of the following organization is are correctly matched with the location of their headquarters? United Nations Development Program. It is in New York City. That is correct. Absolutely correct. United Nations Environment Program. 
that is in Nairobi in Kenya. It is not there in Geneva, Switzerland. Second is wrong. First has to be correct because A, B, C, D, all of them have one as the option as you can see here. So you don't even need to see one. Second, if it is wrong, then the only option that can be correct is three is right or wrong. Food and Agricultural Organization FAO is in Rome, Italy. So answer here becomes B. Fourth has to be wrong. Fourth has to be wrong because there is no option where one, three, four can be correct. So World Meteorological Organization is in Geneva, Switzerland, not in Nairobi, Kenya. UNEP is in Geneva. Uh, so basically 2 and 4 are replaced so answer here becomes b that is 1 and 3 the correct location of headquarters of each of the organization is united nation development program is in new york city united states united nations environment program is in nairobi kenya food and agriculture organization is in rome italy world meteorological organization is geneva switzerland so answer here becomes b 1 and 3 2 and 4 were basically cross matched Question number 342. Which of the following statement about BirdLife International is correct? It is the official red list uh, authority for birds for the IUCN. Yes, this is correct. BirdLife International is responsible for identifying sites which are referred to as important bird and biodiversity areas. So this is also correct. Answer here becomes C, both 1 and 2. So BirdLife International is the world's largest nature conservation partnership with 120 BirdLife partners worldwide. And BirdLife International is the red list authority for birds coordinating the process of evaluating all of the world's bird species against the red list categories and criteria in order to assess their extinction risk. So this is important and it strives to conserve birds, their habitats, global biodiversity, working with people towards sustainability in the use of natural resources. So answer here is C that is both 1 and 2. Question number 343 which of the following is responsible for the creation of biosphere reserve. So basically UNESCO is responsible for this United Nations Educational Scientific and Cultural Organization uh, that is responsible for the uh, creation of biosphere reserves. So the origin of biosphere reserves goes back to the biosphere conference which was organized by UNESCO in 1968. 50 years ago, it is the first intergovernmental conference to seek to reconcile the conservation and use of natural resources. So you can see it takes a lot of effort and time, but ultimately uh, something comes out of it. Man and the Biosphere program, MAP program was officially launched by UNESCO in 1970. And one of the MAP projects consisted in establishing a coordinated world network of new protected areas. And they were to be designated as biosphere reserves. Very big thing they did back then which of the following statement is correct about the international seabed authority india is not a member of isa this is wrong it was founded in 1994 and within one year in 1995 india became the member so this is definitely wrong its functions includes regulation of deep seabed mining to ensure protection of the marine environment from any harmful effects so this is correct so answer here is b that is two only so India became a member of the ISA in 1995, it was founded in 1994 and the authority promotes research to ensure environmentally sustainable development of seabed mineral resources. So answer here is B, that is two only. Question number 345, who amongst the following publishes the World Water Development Report? So again answer is UNESCO, United Nations Educational Scientific and Cultural Organization publishes WWDR, World Water Development Report. And World Water Assessment Program of UNESCO publishes the WWDR and maybe the title is important. The 2017 edition is titled as Wastewater, the Untapped Resource. Question number 346. Consider the following statements about the Indian Network on Climate Change Assessment, INCA. Okay, it was launched by Ministry of Environment and Forest in 2009 to promote the domestic research on climate change. This is correct. Reports by INCA from, form the part of India's national communication with UNFCCC. So this is also correct. So answer here becomes C. That is both 1 and 2. So both these statements are absolutely correct. So Indian Network on Climate Change Assessment INCA is a network of scientists in India set up to publish peer-reviewed findings on climate change in India. And INCA is basically a network-based program and it consists of over 120 institutions over 250 scientists country wide and it is uh, they are country wide aimed at bringing more science based policy making question number 347 
which of the following statement is correct the national green tribunal was set up in 2010 for effective and expeditious disposal of cases relating to environmental protection conservation of forest and other natural resources this is correct the decision of ngt is final and binding on the parties involved no no this is this is not there appeal can be made to supreme court so answer here is a one only so decision of ngt you can appeal into the supreme court against the ngt order or decision within 90 days from the date of communication of the award decision or order of the tribunal you can definitely go to the supreme court because ultimately supreme court is the highest court of the country question number 348 which of the following statement is or are correct clean development mechanism is one of the flexible market mechanisms devised under the kyoto protocol that is correct the national clean development mechanism authority of india is responsible for evaluation and approval of projects in accordance with guidelines issued by the cdm executive board of unfccc both these statements are correct answer is c both one and two so kyoto Proto kyoto flexible market protocol mechanisms include joint implementation clean development mechanisms and emission trading try to remember all the definitions the cdm is defined in article 12 it allows a country with an emission reduction or emission limitation commitment let's say germany which is an annex b country to implement an emission reduction project in developing countries let's say india so such projects can earn saleable certificate emission reduction credits once cer is equals to 1 ton of co2 so india will give it to germany and germany will say that we have reduced the co2 production and it can be counted towards meeting kyoto targets question number 349 the declaration of protected area is made by state government has to declare it so answer is b so state government can declare its intention to constitute any area within or outside any reserve forest as a sanctuary or national park by means of a notification and after the period for preferring claims has elapsed the state government may issue a notification specifying the limits of the area which shall be within the sanctuary and uh, last question for the uh, headquarter of national biodiversity authority of india is located in so answer here is a that is chennai so chennai has the headquarter of national biodiversity authority of india it is a statutory autonomous body under the ministry of environment forest government of india established in 2003 under the provision of biodiversity act after india signed cbd in 1992 thank you for watching this lesson